all. Good morning. Good morning. To God be the glory. We thank God for another opportunity to come together and to worship God and to hear his word and to hear some beautiful singing. Y'all give it up for the, the hymn choir. <laughs> so excited to hear them sing. Oh man, they look beautiful and they're white and black. So we thank God for them and we thank God for their faithfulness. And I'm going to come before you. I have just a few um, announcements. Um, first of all, I want to announce that Mount Zion presents Mental Health Matters. Um, Pastor, last Sunday, he mentioned that Dee will be a facilitator on one of these um, sessions. And her session will be on Tuesday, May 24th at 7 p.m. If you're interested in joining and participating and just joining, and of course you don't have to say anything, um, the meeting ID, I'm gonna read the meeting ID if you wanna jot it down, but if not, um, I have some handouts, so see me after service and I can get these to you. The meeting ID for the Zoom is 828 I think that's 8398-9929, and then the passcode is 508-664, okay? And again, I know that's a lot of information, but see me for a flyer. And if you want to join via a conference call, I also we also have a number on this flyer, um, and that number is 312-626-6799, and the passcode is 137417. So again, um, let us be in prayer for Dee and for um, every facilitator as they go forth in this Mental Health Matters meeting. If you, again, would like to participate and support her or just get, you know call in and get some information, you can be silent, um, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to be some very helpful information that we can share with others, okay? And also I want to thank um, all of our uh, uh, young adults who called in for the power hour on Tuesday. I know Rayel, she's here, she did, and we had some other um, callers that called in. So we wanna thank God for them because they took time out of their busy schedules and they um, you know, did not think that uh, it was unnecessary uh, to call in, but they were faithful when they called in and they were responding. And so I just thank God for them. You guys, please continue to be in prayer for our young adults and for the power hour we're praying that this gives them an opportunity again to share and to gain some insight and information and also to grow in god so we thank god and we're going to turn it over to the hymn choir amen amen
Amen. Amen. Let us pray for our invocation. Father God, we thank you, God, for this day. Father God, we thank you, God, that better days are not only coming, God, just here on earth, God, but one day, God, hallelujah, oh God, we're going to get to see your face, God. So, God, we honor you and we thank you, God. We thank you for this time. We thank you, God, for your power, presence, provision, and protection. Father God, we invite you into this time of worship, God. Lord, we ask that your will will be done, God, that everything that's done, that it would be, that it would be done to bring you glory. So, Father, we pray, God, right now, God, for the man of God. We pray, God, that you will speak to him and through him, God. Father God, we pray, Lord, that you will prepare our hearts for the word, God. We thank you, God, that your word is living and powerful. And it's sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. So, God, we thank you, Lord, and we just pray, Lord, that everything, God, that's done in this service, God, that it will point towards you and not ourselves. So have your way, oh God. And it is in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen.
opportunity to come this morning to worship together. It is a blessing to not only see everyone, but particularly it's a blessing to see uh, this hymn choir uh, assemble together. Amen. Amen. They've been, they've been sitting back in the cars for nearly two years. And I thank God, I thank God for them sitting and being here today. You see, because sometimes people only want to show up when it's their time. If it's not our Sunday that we're going to sing, or our Sunday that we're going to usher, not our Sunday to lead devotion, we just don't show up. But it's something when people stay committed because they love God. And I say that because if we would just peruse this audience this morning, then we'll see that there are, are people who are not here, some who have not been here since the pandemic because of some of the reasons that I mentioned. They, they were not singing, they were not ushering, they were not doing some of those things, and so they didn't show up. But if you look around at these faces, these people have been here, they, they sat in their corners, they prayed, they continued to give to support the ministry during the pandemic. And that speaks volumes. You speak volume when you have people who are just committed because they're part of something and they love God. And there are a lot of people, a lot of us who are younger, we need to take a look at their example. And we need to be faithful. You know, and, and I've heard I've heard the excuses, you know, again, that I just can't get on like sitting in the cars. We all make sacrifices. Amen. Who said, let me tell you, living a Christian life is not convenient. There are challenges that we face. The Bible said, all those who will live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So we go through some things, and you're looking for convenience, then you got to check yourself because. Christianity is not about convenience, it's about making sacrifices, it's about being committed, it's about staying to the core, even when things are not the way they used to be. That's what it's about. That's what commitment does for us. We show that forth. And they've been faithful. And can I, can I thank you again? I just want to say that, I want to say that because I stand here Sunday after Sunday, I look around and, and I tell you that I see more of your generation than the upcoming generation. Some of them got more energy, but they're not here. Some of them have the time, but they're not here. So I want to thank you all for being here. 
And thank you for the songs that remind us there's a better day coming. And every once in a while, we need to know that there's a better day coming. And, 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 it, and it's not just on the other side, but there's a better day coming on this side. Do you know God has blessed us tremendously during this pandemic? talking to a friend of mine this morning well elder smith they're going to have a, their brown, groundbreaking ceremony uh at three o'clock p.m for their new fellowship building and uh we were talking this morning and he was just telling me the extraordinary thing that the lord did for their church during the pandemic better day god is blessing right now and I thank God for it. And God is not only blessed over there, but God is blessed over here as well. Amen. You know, so we just want to say that we give God praise. And I, and I know I got to move on with the message today, but then I want to thank you for singing the song about Until I Die. I took that as a song of commitment. Commitment to the Lord. You see, this Christian journey is not a sprint. It's a marathon. <laughs> You just keep on running. You keep on moving. And I serve the Lord until I die. And once again, some people, maybe this ought to be the message for today. <laughs> some people, some people wanted to be convenient, Christianity, but th there are many inconveniences. But it takes a lot when we say, I'm going to serve him until I die. Thank you. And then the praise team came back and they said, all the glory belong to you, O oh God. God deserves all the glory, all the, the credit, the honor for what's been done. Do you know when we sit up here today, this choir sitting here and singing, do you know that God deserves the glory for bringing us and them through this pandemic? That they can see here today, all the glory belongs to the Lord. Sometimes we don't think about it. And there's not enough for us to get excited about. But do you know every time you see your brothers and sisters and see this choir and others coming together, all the glory belongs to God. They didn't do anything so good. We didn't do anything so good. But God kept us. He allowed us to come. He deserves the glory. All of it belongs to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now go with me to the division of Psalm, Psalm 51, and I'll try not to be here too long. Psalm 51, a very familiar psalm. I want to read uh, first the first four verses, and I've been reading from the New King James Version, Psalm 51. You're familiar with uh, this particular psalm. And it is here that David cries out to the Lord. He prays. He has a penitent heart. And he says to the Lord, have mercy upon me, O God. According to your loving kindness and according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Verse 4, he said, against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. I want to just talk this morning from the subject, disappointing God. Disappointing God. The word of this psalm do not reflect a person in a state of happiness. Rather, these words uh, point to a person who is in pain. He's not in pain because he has been injured by someone. No, the writer is in pain because his pains are self-inflicted. It's not uncommon for people to be the source of their own pain. The primary way people inflict pain upon themselves is through decisions. You see, decisions can not only cause pain for ourselves, decisions can also cause pain for others. 
So when we make decisions, we need to consider the impact that our decisions have on our lives and the lives of others. And once again, as we read this psalm, we ought to sense that David is hurting. And to understand the words of this psalm and exactly what was going on, it is important to, to look at the backdrop for this particular writing. And then you have to go back to 2 Samuel chapter 11 and also 2 Samuel chapter number 12. So if you would just turn over there so we can understand why David is at this place. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, beginning with verse 2, just listen as we begin to understand what happened. The Bible says, then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. Verse 3, so David sent an inquired about the woman, and someone said, said to David, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? Then David sent a messenger and took her and came, and she came to him, and he lay with her, for she was cleansed for her impurities, and she returned to her house. So David, on the top of the house, he saw this woman bathing herself, and the Bible says that she was a beautiful woman. So David sent out and wondered, who is this beautiful woman? He said, David, this is the Sheba. And Bathsheba is married to Uriah the Hittite. And notice, if you read, David did only send a messenger, but the Bible said David sent messengers. Now, I've read this before, but this is the first time that I saw that David understood full well, you know, who she was. And David understood what was at stake. But David, he made sure that Bathsheba came to his house. And the Bible said that David slept with her. But how many of you know that this is not the end of the story? Fast forward now from verse 4 down to verse 5, 2 Samuel 11. The Bible said then Bathsheba sent a message to David saying, David, I am with child. Now David's decision caused him to have to deal with a different set of issues. Fearing that the truth would come out about Bathsheba being pregnant and finding out that Uriah, her husband, was not the father of the child, called David to be alone. So therefore, David conjured up a plan to try to attempt to cover up the truth. Now, there is something that we need to realize about truth. And you need to write this down because if you're trying to cover up truth, remember this. Truth has a way of surfacing no matter how much dirt we try to use to cover it up. You see, truth cannot be hid under mounds of pretense. In other words, people do things to try to cover up the truth. They, they pretend about some stuff, but remember what I said, that truth has a way of surfacing no matter how much dirt we try to use to cover up truth. If we pretend to love people and we really don't love them, the truth is going to come out. Doesn't matter how we smile and pat them on the back and all that kind of stuff, the truth will come out. If we pretend that we have everything together when our lives are really fragmented, don't you understand the truth? It is going to come out. If we pretend that we love God and we honor him with our lips and fail to honor him with our lives, don't you understand the truth? It will come out. You see, they may bury the truth for a while, but the truth always have a way of resurfacing. It's uncovered because you can't keep truth down. The greatest example of how truth uh, can uh, find a way to surface when it's tried to be covered is seen in the resurrection of Christ. You see, Jesus said in John, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
You see, one day truth was led to the cross of Calvary. And it was there that crude truth was crucified and taken down from the cross and laid in a borrowed tomb. They wanted to make sure that the truth didn't get out. So therefore, the king had the tomb sealed with a stone. And he placed soldiers at the door of the tomb to make sure that no one would come and steal the truth and paint a lie like the truth didn't get up. But how many of you know that there's no way you can hold the truth down? You see, on the third day morning, truth couldn't be held down. A stone couldn't keep the truth from getting out. Soldiers couldn't keep the truth from getting up. Early one morning, the truth got up to say, I am the Messiah. I am he. The seed of promise. And, and listen, the truth could not be held down. They told a lie about the truth, saying somebody came and stole his body away. But there were eyewitnesses that the same truth that died on the cross of Calvary, that same truth died up from the grave. I don't know about you, but I'm a witness today that the truth is alive and well. He said, I'm he that lived, I'm he that was dead, and I'm alive. You can't hold the truth down. You see, there are folk who think they're getting away by trying to cover up the truth. But the truth is going to surface. Just keep that in mind. Some of us are dealing with pain because of situations in which people have not been truthful. Some of us are being treated a certain way because people have not been truthful about us. But I've come to tell you today, don't get upset when people spread falsehood about you. Don't, don't compromise. Don't waver from the path. Keep on walking in truth because ultimately, truth will prevail. David took some extraordinary steps to try to cover up the truth. David sent for Uriah, who was on the field of battle. David had him to come home, and when he came to the king's palace, the king fed him well. And then the king, he told Uriah that he ought to go home. Rather, than take a few days off. You've been in battle. You go home and spend some time with your wife. Now, you all know what David was trying to do. David was trying to send Uriah home so that when the truth came out, when they found out that Bathsheba was with child, David wanted to say, is Uriah's baby. So Uriah being a committed soldier that he was, he didn't think it was right to go home and enjoy time with his wife while the other soldiers were on the field of battle so he wouldn't go home. So that David didn't stop there. David got Uriah drunk. And he tried to send Uriah home so Uriah could go and sleep with Bathsheba. Even he didn't sleep with her. David said, well, she was at home during that time. So it must be his child. But that didn't work. So after that didn't work, David had Uriah killed in battle. Isn't it something at the great length the people will go to try to cover up the truth? They don't mind hurting folk, destroying people. If it means that the dirt that they've done, if they can stay in the closet. But we need to understand that the truth has a way of always coming out. In David's moment of passion and in David's desperate plot, David seemingly forgot that God is all-seeing and God is all-knowing. You see, in our moments of decision, we need to remember that God sees all and God knows all. After seemingly had covered up the truth, David resumed his life as if nothing had happened. Now Uriah's killed. He considered Bathsheba as being eligible. So now he sins and he takes Bathsheba as his wife. David was all right with things. But what David failed to understand is God wasn't all right. 
If, if you don't mind, just, just look down at 2 Samuel 11, verse 27. Now, David is fine. The Bible says, when her mourning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the Bible says in the last part of that verse, but this thing that David did, that David had done, displeased God. David was all right again, but God wasn't all right. The question we need to ask ourselves about things, is God all right with what we do? Is God happy? Is God pleased? Is God satisfied with what I've done? You see, the question needs to be asked as we go about our lives and as we make decisions, as we conduct business, even as we worship. We need to ask ourselves the question, is God all right with what I've done? Right. You see, when we do some things, we may get a level of satisfaction. But we need to understand, we get more when we please God. Yeah. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, 7, And when a man's ways please the Lord, he may even his enemies be at peace with him. Psalms 84, 11, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. God give grace and God give glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly before him. Yes, we may get something when we please ourselves, but we get more when we please the Lord. Enoch had a great testimony according to Hebrews 11, 5. The Bible said that by faith Enoch was taken away that he should not see death. And he was not found because God took him. But before he took him, he had this testimony saying that he pleased God. You see, when we please God, things ultimately work out the best. The God who sees all. The God who knows all saw David. And therefore, the Lord sent a messenger to David, letting David know, David, you can't cover up the truth. So the prophet Nathan, he comes to David with a riddle to help him to see himself. And when he had expounded on the riddle, David's anger grew hot. And the Bible says, Nathan then said to David, David, you are the man. Look at Samuel, 2 Samuel 12, verses 7 through 9. The Bible says, thus said the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. And I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your keeping and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had not that been too little, I also would have given you much more. Verse 9, why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah, the Hittite, with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of Ammon. Okay, God says to David, David, you know, do, do you know what you've done? David, you have violated my commandment, David. David, you tried to cover up the truth, but I want you to know, David, that you're guilty. You have broken my commandment. When David heard these words, David was a broken man. David's brokenness was not because he had tried to cover it up and the truth had come out. No, no, that's not what broke David. David is broken because he disappointed God. None of us like to be disappointed. You see, because we know what disappointment feels like. Disappointment happens when we expect something or deserve something, and we don't get what we deserve or we expect. Nathan makes it clear that God wants David to know. David I deserve more from you. He tells David, David, I, I've given you the throne of Israel. I put you over the house of Judah. I put you over Israel. David, I gave you your master Saul's house. I gave you his wife. David, I've given you everything. And David, that wasn't enough. I would have given you more. David, after I've done all of the things 
that I have done for you? Why did you treat me the way that you treated me? You see, are we disappointing God after God has done so much for us? I think that we can understand God's disappointment with David because we know from where God brought David. David, this little unnamed shepherd boy, had no reputation. God takes him from where he was and anoints him to be king over Israel, gives him Israel and Judah. God took care of him when Saul was trying to kill him. God protected him. God provided. God fought battles for him. And instead of David honoring God, David committed adultery. David committed murder. And God let David know, David, I deserve more. And before you start to looking at David as if David is the only one who disappointed God, we need to look at ourselves because we also disappoint God. Maybe we feel like God hasn't done as much for us as he did for David, but God has done more to us and for us than we deserve. Look where he brought us from. I just need you to look for a moment. Because sometimes we forget, we forget how far God has brought us. God has brought us from a mighty long ways. And some of us sitting here today, some of you are old enough to realize how far God has brought us. Some of you remember the struggles. Some of you remember the plight that we had to go through. Some of you remember what it was like not to have very much. And now God has given you so much. Some of you remember what the Lord had to do in your life. But how do we treat God? Oh my goodness. You see, some of us, we feel like that only those of us who live longer than some others no, God has brought us from a long way. But you don't have to be old to understand that God has done great things in your life. Do you understand that you've been blessed by the hands of the Almighty God? You ought to just consider some stuff that you've been in in your life and how God brought you out. You ought to think about situations where you shouldn't have come out, but God brought you out some way. You ought to think about the job now, the houses that you live in, God did it for us, and God deserves more. He deserves more. David disappointed God. And now David is a broken man because he disappoints the Lord. And God said to David, David, out of everything I've done for you, David, in so many words, is this how you repay me for my goodness towards you? God deserves the more. Hallelujah. You see, somebody needs to understand that God deserves more commitment from us. It's a small thing to drive up out here to sit in a car for an hour or so. That's a small thing. Yet even at that, some folk think you're asking them too much. God deserves the more. I mean, if God gave you a car, you can go everywhere else. Why can't we use the same car to drive up and to worship God? Why can't, why, why, why can't we do it? You sit in a drive-in line to wait 30 minutes for your food, but you can't sit in your car and worship God. God has blessed you like God has given you gas to put in your car, but yet, no, I can't do that. I ain't used to that. Listen, God deserves the more. He deserves it. God deserves it. God deserves more worship. God deserves more praise. God deserves more righteous living from us. He deserves more. Why does God deserve more? First of all, because he's God. But, but again, you ought to just look back and see how good God has been to you. David is hurting as he composes the words of this psalm. This psalm not only shows a person in pain, but it shows a person who loves God. You see, David, he cares that 
He has offended God. He has offended the Lord. So David is broken. When we love God, we care about how God feels. Yes. Yes. Each of us today should care about how God feels. God's feelings. Yes. God has feelings. God is, is disappointed. God is hurt when he expects more from us. And we don't give God what he deserves. You see, God delights in us when we live a life that honors him. Proverbs eleven twenty says, Those who are of a perverse heart are an abomination to the Lord, but the blameless in their way are his delight. There's one song that talk about how God sings over those in whom he delights. Yeah. You see, God, he, he cares. Oh, yes, yes. And we ought to care about how we make God feel. Yeah. So David in the psalm now, he cries out to God. He cries out to God because he knows that he's injured God. He disappointed God. And so David said, have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness and the multitude of your tender mercies. David said, blot out my transgression, wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. David said, I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. I guess you have our only sin and done this evil in your sight. David said that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. David said, God, whatever you do to me, I deserve whatever you do because I've wronged you, God. But David said, have mercy on me. And I thank God for being a merciful God. God has shown us mercy. He's given us divine compassion over and over again. David understood that he deserved just for justice for what he did, but he asked God to give him mercy. And I'm glad today that God is a God yeah. that shows us mercy yeah. even when we deserve justice. Yeah. You see, the old folk used to say that if justice had a plumb the line, I wouldn't have been here right now. I didn't understand it, but I understand it now. When I look at my faults and my failures, yeah. all of my disappointments, I understand that I deserve justice, but God gave me mercy. Yeah. And if you feel like that I'm the only who's been a recipient of the mercies of God, you need to think again because none of us have been so good that we should have made it here this morning. None of us laid down so righteous that we should get up this morning. But early this morning, God gave us brand new mercy. Early this morning, God gave us another chance. We ought to praise God today for being a merciful God. God, I know I've disappointed you. I know that I've sinned and come short of your glory. I didn't deserve what you've given me, God, but I'm thankful right now. I'm not going to be an arrogant Christian. I'm not going to be a self-righteous Christian to act like I got everything right. No, I'm not going to act like that. I know it had not been for the goodness of my God. If it had not been for the mercies of my God, I would have been dead. But God showed me divine compassion. That he was not only hurt, but then David, you fast forward a little more through Psalm 51. David cries out to the Lord. He said, create in me a clean heart, O God. Oh my goodness, when I read that, I could just hear David say to the Lord, he said, Lord, there's something in me that I need you to make over again. He, he, he was saying to the Lord, Lord. Give me a clean heart. Yeah. This, this heart that I have somehow it seems that I got out of sync with you, God. I need you to make me over again. Yeah. If there's anybody here today who will look at yourself and want to tell God, Lord, make me over again. I, my mind just don't think like I ought to think, God. My heart do not love like it ought to love. I need you to make me over again. I like what David did. 
head, you see, because some folk want God to make their hands new and make their feet new. No, no, I want God to start on the inside of me because if God gets the inside straightened up, the outside is going to act the way that it should back. God make me over again, creating me a clean heart. Oh, God, renew a right spirit within me. Lord, I failed you. I disappointed you. I need you to make me over again. Hear David's heart cry. That's, that's my cry. Lord, make me over. I disappointed you. I failed you. Yes. And I need a make yes. yes. Anybody else here today? Hallelujah. Want to say to the Lord, Lord, make me over. I failed you. Sometimes the hardest thing to do is to admit that we've been wrong. Folk don't want to do that. But at this moment, the Lord is speaking to us. People who disappointed him. Lord, help me. Let me first call to people who are unsaved this morning. Because some of you fail to understand that the truth that I talked about went to Calvary and died for our sins. Yeah. Yeah. He paid the price, the yeah. sin debt that we couldn't pay. Yeah. And to walk away from the truth that has to displease God. God wants you to be saved so badly that he has delayed the coming of his son. Because he wants us to be saved. He delayed the coming of his son. So this morning I want to give you an invitation to come to Jesus. Will you come this morning? If there's one I'm saved. God. She's playing make me over again. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Make me over. 
four times for our example. Our examples, God, we can read, we can understand ourselves and even understand others and understand you. David's life was on display for us to read where we can see his failures. See how he disappointed you. But there's no way that we can look at David today without looking at ourselves. But Lord, you've done so many great things in our lives. And even as we live in the awareness of your goodness, we still disappoint you. Lord, we sometimes are just bent on having what we want when we want it. We sometimes bent on going left when you're pulling us to go right. There are some things within us that we struggle with. Sometimes, God, we allow our focus to shift from what we know to be right to things that are pulling at us. David, as you said, was a man after your own heart. But yet, David, he veered off. And David understood that his flesh got him in trouble. Lord, as we pray today, we have struggles. Some standing here today can't understand themselves. They can't understand their plight. They, they can't understand some of the tendency, God. When, when, they, when they read your word, when they hear your voice, they know what is right, God. But there's a struggle. A struggle that is too much for us to be able to overcome on our own. David realized this when he asked you, God, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew in me an upright spirit, a right spirit within me, God. I need you to do something in me. Here, the heart cries of the children today. There are those crying out just like David said, Lord, I need you to help me with me. It's not other folk getting in my way, but sometimes I get in my own way, God. Even when I hear you pulling me, God, I still struggle to do what I know I ought to do, God. And I just veer off the path. But right now, God, I come clean with you because I know that you can work on me from the inside. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you today, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being merciful and forgiving. And David realized this. He said, blot out my transgressions. Cleanse me from my iniquities. Thank you today for reminding us, every person here who may be living under a cloud of guilt, condemnation, that you are forgiving God. You wash David, and you wash us right now. So, Lord, we thank you today. Forgive us for disappointing you. We pray that as we move forward, that we'll do better, that we will honor you, and, Lord, that you will delight in us. Father, this is the prayer of your servants all over this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. This is God bless you. This choir has sat here with me during the heat. Hallelujah. And, uh, and it's only fitting. And I thank you, choir. Thank you. Man, I ain't know why I ain't missing Amen Corner so much. <laughs> uh, I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. As we get ready to go, will y'all just bless us with a song as we get ready to go? Thank you all so much.
Thank you for the practicing and all the, the things. You all just, you, you, you all just bless us as we leave. Listen, God loves you today. I love you. Hear the word of the Lord. God has spoken to our hearts. God bless you. Go ahead, choir. Okay. Again, God bless you all. Thank you. Uh, we look forward to you all singing again. I think the city will sing every two weeks. So we praise God for them. And I want you all to realize, church, that we are a multi generational church. And multi generational church has to be a diverse church. So, in other words, they're going to be a little song for everybody. <laughs> Amen. Let's look to the Lord. Father, again, thank you for this worship experience. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for speaking to us. Pray that you bless the offering that is going to be received as we depart this place. And as we depart this place, we ask you for your guiding, guiding power through the Holy Spirit. Lord, live in us. Bigger today than you did yesterday. And we pray that we won't disappoint you this week, but you will delight in us. And now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now and forevermore. Amen. And amen. God bless you.